Hello everyone, I'm Rupert Goff, CEO of The Mortgage Lab, and today we are talking about all things that happened in the mortgage industry, October 2021. First up, the Triple CFA, or Credit Contracts and Consumers Finance Act, for those of you who like tongue twisters, is now fully embedded in any mortgage application, despite not actually being enforceable until December 2021. This means the banks are looking in depth at what you've been spending your money on and using that as your budget for once you have your mortgage. If you're looking to purchase a home in 2022 and income is going to be the hurdle you face, make sure you have curbed your enthusiasm for spending for at least three months prior to applying. Oh, controversial showing a Donald Trump related clip there, but I thought covering your toilet in gold and declaring bankruptcy might summarize what not to do when approaching the bank for lending. In similar news, BNZ became the second New Zealand bank to introduce debt to income ratios, even though there is no regulatory requirement to do so. Debt to income ratios limit lending to a certain multiple of the applicant's income, usually from six to seven times. In other words, a household with $100,000 of household income applying at a bank with a seven times debt to income ratio could only ever borrow $700,000, including credit card debt and car loans. Interestingly enough, it's unclear at this point whether student loans are included in the total debt as the payments for this debt are based on your income, not on the total debt. This introduction of debt to income ratios will be in some part due to the previously mentioned triple CFA. That means that banks and lenders in general must show they are lending money responsibly to clients. While I do think debt to income ratios are a bit of a crude instrument, I do tend to like them as they affect higher earners more than lower earners. In other words, they have less overall effect on first home buyers trying to get in the market. And probably the most shocking news to come out in the past 10 years, the Labour government reached a bipartisan agreement with the National Party on the, wait for it, resource management open brackets enabling housing supply and other matters close brackets amendment bill or REMH for short. I'm sorry, what? Effectively, with both sides of government agreeing that housing supply was an issue, the two parties came together to announce loosening of restrictions on obtaining resource consent for building additional houses or units in certain parts of the country. While it will take a while to come into play, this should be good news for a market that is desperately short of stock and keen to build. The bipartisan agreement also means that tinkering with the housing supply is not going to be an election issue, except that it totally will be. It's just got to be too tempting to play with the this party thinks this and we've got a better way by both sides. Finally, if you thought I was saving the good news until last, prepare yourself for disappointment. Interest rates continue to climb with the one year now hovering around 3.35%, up by over 50% from the June 2021 lows. Markets have factored in several OCR jumps and this has been shown in the mortgage rates. Our suggestion is if you have a fixed rate maturing soon, you'd get it locked in ASAP as the trend certainly seems to be going up. Most banks can lock in the rate up to 48 to 60 days ahead of time, so keep an eye on your maturity dates and get in early. That's it for this month. If you enjoyed watching this, please don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. I'm Rupert Goff from Mortgage Lab. Talk soon.